This video is brought to you by Dell Gaming. Don't just play, game. This is the perfect gaming desk. Rescued from a dull accounting office, this is now the centre of the Click Empire. Where videos have been written. Where memes have been spouted. Where battles have been won. It has a perfect height, plenty of space and handy cable management that I haven't bought using yet. It even has its own battle scar. A raised blister where I once placed a hot bowl of baked beans. Gets in the way of my mouse all the time. But this is where I've always been. Until now. This is Dell's new Inspiron 157000 from the lineup of gaming laptops. It's not an ultra portable. It's not something that will float away in the wind or that you can slip into your back pocket. But it packs the punch of a desktop into its sleek, sexy chassis and can do 0 to 60 FPS in under a second. It can be carefully placed into your bag to be taken to lands, tournaments, and your mum's house at just a moment's notice. This is a gaming rig crammed into a laptop. Today, the world opens up to me. I'm no longer bound by my desk. Time to take gaming on the move for a spin, thanks to some top gear from Dell. If you're a student, then you can already see the appeal of the desktop replacement. Rather than having to buy two separate PCs, one for home and one for university, Instead, you can have a single desktop replacement laptop with the additional luxury of portability. The rest of us don't have such a good reason. We already have our trusty desk, a place we've spent more time at and feel more at home with than anywhere else in our lives. Well, apart from our own beds, of course. Which is why I started my journey here. There is always the possibility of gaming in bed. I'm disappointed with myself that I hadn't tried this sooner. I guess I assumed it was a luxury that was reserved for royalty or something. I'm sure the Queen enjoys racking up frags on pub before getting on with their queenly duties. And yet, just a few brave feet off-road, I was already facing some challenges. No self-respecting gamer would risk gaming on anything other than a flat surface, of which a bed is not. But then again, neither is my desk. But where could I find a hard, flat surface? Hmm. Hmm. As luck would have it, I found myself a fantastic mousepad that was gamer-sized and everything. I also suggest something to rest your laptop on to keep it free from dust and to help airflow. But where could I possibly find something to rest my laptop on? Hmm. Hmm. It even came with a built-in vent for cooling. How about that? With this in place, I had one of the laziest days of my life, playing all sorts of games without having to move a muscle. So close to home, I was still blessed with mains power. The charger that comes with this beast is pretty much brick-sized. But the plus side is that it didn't get anywhere near as hot as some of the smaller bricks I've encountered, even after a lengthy and completely unfair session of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. So how does bed use fare? I had fun. I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be when browsing Reddit or watching the latest and greatest Two Clicks Philip video. Hey man, what's up? How it handled for gaming depended on the genre. For fast-paced FPS games like CSGO, gaming in bed put too much strain on my keyboard hand. I was continually edging closer and closer to the screen and my hand ended up at some sharp, strange angle. Slower paced strategy games, on the other hand, were fine. I've never been so comfortable whilst invading France. Bush Hiding Simulator was also fine, provided you spend most of the time acting like vegetation and don't continually bunny hop about scanning the horizon for malicious pixels. But the best had to be racing games. In a previous life, I just may have been a racing car presenter or something, as car games always impress me. If you're going to race in bed, then do it with a gamepad, which just happens to be the controller of choice for a player on the move. Gaming with my hand under the blankets was the warmest my extremities have ever felt this time of year. All the while, Dirt Rally performed brilliantly on the machine. Too fast, perhaps. But then again, speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly lagging out, that's what gets you. Sadly, my bedtime antics had to come to an end as I commenced the next stage of testing. Things really began to rev up as I switched to battery power. For this, I chose the living room, firstly because it has a comfy chair, and second, if I position it just so, then everybody walking past outside can be jealous of my setup. Now, I didn't want to scratch this genuine leather upholstery with my makeshift mouse pads, so I had to use the laptop on my laptop and my mouse on the armrest. Regardless, I could still be a pretty decent armchair general, but any chances of victory in Counter-Strike were now right off the desk. This kind of use is still okay Sorry. for casual gaming or general web browsing, but I wouldn't recommend throwing away your gaming desk just yet. Getting used to truly mobile gaming was a bit of a learning experience for me, as 
there are some additional options that you can tinker with, tinker, tinker with, tinker with when it comes to performance. The battery hardly went down at all in day-to-day -day applications and tasks, but where's the fun in that? Booting up games depleted the battery sooner, but how quickly depended on what game, and which screen brightness and power saving options I had chosen. I suspect a lot of this comes down to the Inspiron sporting a Max-Q optimised graphics card. According to Nvidia's own site, this comprises of a number of tweaks to drivers and hardware to keep power efficiency as high as possible, and noise levels at or below 40 decibels. Most interestingly for me was an option to limit the frame rate to prevent extra, unseen frames from being drawn. The GeForce 1060 and the proper i7 processor had no problem making Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Shadow of War and other demanding titles run well and look pretty. Of course, the more demanding the game, the more power it requires to hit the 60fps target, which presents you with another interesting choice. Do you let the laptop stretch its legs by ramping up the detail settings, or do you stick to lower settings for longer battery life? Because it varies by application, I can only estimate that a worst case scenario like Fermark will use the battery up within 60 to 90 minutes, whilst most games will last for a fair bit longer. As well as improving battery life, other benefits of using power saving tools such as Whisper Mode and Battery Boost are that they also reduce heat and noise. Of course, game on a desk with mains power and you probably won't bother with these features, but on the move I did appreciate them since they kept my lap and the keyboard cooler. It's always reassuring when a laptop isn't hot or noisy, when there's nothing between it and your delicate pale legs. Onto the design of the Inspiron 7577, the grills at the back are to disperse the heat. The ones at the front are actually speakers. Being accustomed to laptop audio coming from the base of the screen, this change gives the illusion that the sound is coming out of the keyboard itself. It's capable of decent volumes and even some bass. It's hard to show this in a video, but here's my attempt. This game with praise and stuff. Well, since then I've been chipping away at it. And now to compare the volume against a universally recognised sound. The Casio Watch. The new day and a new racing challenge. It's there are a total of three USB plugs. Two on the right hand side and one on the left. The latter of which is great news if you're trying to use a mouse in a confined space. When it comes to charge times, it depends on the settings you choose. There's an express mode that aims to have it charged by 80% within an hour, but I chose to stick with the slower charge, which is apparently better for your battery's lifespan in the long term. Last, the ultimate challenge. I mean, I could have gone outside, but why risk jealous people and seagulls? No, I have a better challenge. Up. Up, up, up to the no-fi zone. Tis a forsaken place, for there is no Wi-Fi here. The Inspiron actually has multiple antennas inside it to maximise what connection it can have, but that doesn't matter if there's no Wi-Fi to be had, if you're in a desert or the middle of the ocean, for instance, or on the top floor of my house. I may as well have been in Mordor, but that's fun, because I am here to test gaming in the remotest of places, where you'll only have your phone's data connecting you to the rest of the world. As expected, it wasn't worth it. The connection was a few bits short of a bite. Morse code with the Eye of Sauron would have been faster. It was bad, worse than I could have imagined. I lagged out. Enemies teleported and appeared, then disappeared again. And I died. A lot. And then I timed out. Gaming on the move is possible, and in some cases, preferable to desktop gaming. But don't throw out your favourite table just yet, as it does still hold value, even if you choose a laptop to be your machine. There is nowhere else that I'd rather be if in an extended first person shooter match, and there's no beating a LAN cable for a reliable internet connection. Plus, some games benefit immensely from the extra screen space that a dedicated monitor provides. But with a laptop, any flat surface can become your desk. Grabbing that table seat on a train is no longer a missed opportunity. Home is where the computer is, which with a laptop, becomes a hell of a lot bigger. Thank you to Dell for providing the Inspiron 7577 laptop for this video. For Black Friday and Cyber Monday, there will be 15% off the lineup. Check out the link in this video's description for more.